We are very pleased to have with us today Larry Hostetler. Larry is a, um, well, I wouldn't say retired development uh, executive, but he's been in the development business on our side of it for a long, long time. And then he fairly recently began working with AFP International. Larry is based in California, and he is the guy who is the go-to person for local chapters. He has a certain number. He's got California and North and South Carolina and Pennsylvania and I don't know what else. <laughs> but, the, but the reality is that, that Larry meets with us twice a year. I mean, no, he meets with us every other year. And um, the services that are done by AFP International are truly unbelievable. And you can see that sometime if you go to their website and see just how many things they offer. And so Larry is here, and each year we are challenged as a chapter to have a program on ethics. And so I found out Larry uh, had a different take on how to do that, that basic program. So we jumped at it, and we got him to, to, uh, to come uh, work with us today. And I will tell you, in case you uh, feel like you want a job like Larry has, just so you'll know, he got up at 5 o'clock yesterday morning in California, flew into Asheville in the afternoon. He will leave this afternoon, fly back to California, be there for 24 hours, and then take off for San Antonio in the International Convention. Mm -hmm. So uh, those of you I've heard talking about how much he'd like his job, not so much. <laughs> but uh, with that, I'll introduce Larry Hostetler. <laughs> Thank you. And just to fill in a little bit of what Alex said, I, I, uh, I have 66 chapters in six time zones. Wow. So that, uh, to give you a scope. And, and you have to take the, the good with the bad. Um, I, I have to go to Hawaii every other year as well as, as uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. So, you know, it is... <laughs> But I do enjoy it, and, and the best part of it is getting to meet you people. Uh, chat, fundraisers are the best people in the world, I'm convinced. And I really enjoy the opportunity of getting to meet you and getting to know what you're doing. And the introductions were wonderful. I love that. I, I hope to come close to that with some of the energy of this. So we'll get started in just a second. I need to ask a couple of questions. How many of you are familiar with the AFP's different uh, resources on ethics. Raise your hand if you would. Okay, how many of you feel you know everything there is to know about AFP resources on ethics? Oh, really? Okay. And how many of you go, ethics? <laughs> okay, uh, we've got somebody. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going to reach all of you uh, with this today. How many of you, uh, next question, how many of you are familiar with the game show Jeopardy? <laughs> Okay, that's the one with uh, Vanna Wright turning the... No, that's not the one. It's, it's one with Alex Trebek. I'm playing the role of Alex Trebek today. And, uh, and so, the, the, just so you know, I will, we will pose the answers on the screen. And so anyone in the back with poor eyesight, there are some seats up front. Uh, but everybody who answers and comes close to being correct, which means words come out of your mouth, <laughs> we'll get a prize and it will be brought to you and and so you you may have some choice over that so uh, on every table should be one or two noisemakers and somebody one or two people at each table needs to be designated as the as the alerter for your table these are we've gone to virtually no expense with this buzzer system as you can see and so so this is the way, and I'd like if somebody at the back table, do you have a, do you, who's the designated responder for the table or two? Do you have one yet? I need you to make noise with your noisemaker so I can see if I can hear it. See, there you go, okay. So everybody, now some of these are the kind that you have to uh, blow into, so if you have to blow into it, make noise with that right now so you know how hard you have to blow. There you go. Okay, I didn't hear any of the flutes. Did somebody do that? Was that a flute there? Okay, there we go. Okay, okay. And here's the deal. I'll have no idea who answered first. <laughs> so, once you've answered, if you, you know, 
be quick with your raising the hand, so I'll do both the visual and the audio clue for the answer. So let's get, are you ready to get started? It's great while you're still eating. Great while you're still eating, because the food will just pour out of your mouth with the answers. I can't wait to see the spurting of the, of the food. So, uh, Ethics Jeopardy. Ethics Jeopardy. I, why do we do this? Well, part of the mission of AFP <coughs> Is, is, to, is to advance philanthropy and enabling people and organizations to practice ethical and effective fundraising. That's, part of, that's our mission for existing AFP. So as part of that, we want you to know how to be ethical in your fundraising and how you can make sure you're ethical. So with that, here is the board, okay? Now, because I don't know uh, because, and for those of you in the back, shame on you. <laughs> get here earlier and get a front row seat next month. The, uh, the, the categories are EAI, which stands for Ethics Assessment Inventory. How many of you have taken the Ethics Assessment Inventory? I see some hands there. Good, good. You'll be the first to respond, I'm sure, from your table. Uh, so the, that's the first column is Ethics Assessment Inventory. The second column is the code which, because if I had put the Code of Ethical Standards and Practices up there, even I couldn't read it. So I, I simplified it to the code. Does everybody everybody know we have a Code of Ethics? Yes. Uh, okay, nobody raised their hand. Okay, <laughs> everybody shook their head, nobody raised their hand. So, Okay, and the third one, which uh, we've already got, we're gonna start with Ethics for 200 since it's already done, but wait, wait until I get through. The third one is the Ethics Committee. How many of you knew there was an Ethics Committee? Okay, the front half of the room. <laughs> and, how, and then the fourth one is grab bag, because there are some things outside of those three, there are some uh, resources available to you in the ethics arena that are available, and we put that in the grab bag. So, thank you for coming. <laughs> it wasn't anything I said, I hope. Okay, good. <laughs> One more prize for the rest team. Okay. <laughs> We're, we are going to start with, and if you know Ethics Jeopardy, the answer comes on. You have to post the question. We're going to start with Ethics. With that, what was that? Eth that was uh, the third one over. Was, you got to go back to the uh, house at the bottom. House at the bottom. House at the bottom. Sorry. Go home, go home. <laughs> Ethics committee. Okay. Sorry. Not, not you. Oh. <laughs> Ethics Committee for 200 is where we're going to start, and just to, those in the front already know the question. So those in the back need to be quick. Okay, Ethics Committee for 200, the answer is about 100 each month. This is where you make noise. There, okay, I heard it over here. How many complaints are there? Apps to, that, to the to the AFP. That is almost completely correct. The the correct answer, actual or quick question, actually is how many times does the ethics committee get a question about ethics? Oh, okay. Wow. Hey. Because wow, you right. do get hey. you do get the opportunity to ask questions of the ethics committee. Okay, that and so about a hundred times every month some member of AFP contacts the Ethics Committee to ask, what do I do in this situation? That's, that's why they exist. Okay, back and Alex, since you had... Golf balls, outstanding, whoever... You control the, the board now. So, what oh. would you like us to... Well, uh, we're sure staying away from the first two. We're gonna try grab bag for 100, Larry. Grab bag for 100, and the answer is, Accountability and ethics can make or break your organization. Weaving ethics into your organization's fundraising. Ethical fundraising, what's the effect on your bottom line? And avoiding ethical nightmares. There we go, second table here. What's the reason to have an ethics committee? What's the reason? That's a great answer. You get a prize. <laughs> great, great question. But actually, what that was, I know you have webinars on a regular basis, and these are some of the past webinars that have been conducted. Those are the titles of the webinars that have been held specifically on the topic of ethics. And those are all available for you to go back and look at if you'd like, because they're all archived. They don't go away into the ethernet and disappear. They are archived, so you can go back and look at any of those webinars if you do want to do an update on and, and any of those makes sense to you. Okay, you control the board. What what subject would you want? You got the board. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was not reading my certificate. Um, the code for 100. The code for 100, and the answer is 1964. First year of the ethics. Uh, I got, I, the first I heard of the noisemaker was in the back table. Yes. The date the uh, the code of ethics was established, and the correct the correct question is when was the code of ethics developed? Yes. Anybody know when? Anybody know when AFP was established? Uh, it was. It was. Very, it was very shortly before the Code of Ethics was, was developed. And that's because one of the reasons why AFP was established was we need to have a Code of Ethics in this profession. And so very quickly, that was the result. They just established this. Okay, you back table, you control the board. What, what would you like? Wait a minute, food's coming out. <laughs> spew, spew. We have code, code for 200. And the answer is number 21. Diane. The member shall not accept compensation or enter into a contract that is based on a percentage of contra contributions. Woo okay, that was a sound. <laughs> I heard a sound. Okay. It wasn't an approved sound, but it was a sound. So go ahead. Uh, one of the rules of the Code of Ethics? It, it, yes, that, that's one of the rules. There are more than 21 of them, but the one that's asked most often wow. about the one that those 100 questions a month, most of the questions relating to the Code of Ethics are around this particular guideline. And the guideline is, why do you not allow percentage-based compensation? Or, I understand you don't allow percentage-based, but the employer wants me to accept that. What do I do? How do I avoid that? So that's, that's what the Ethics co the Committee gets most asked most often. And that's the answer they are most ready to, pr to give. So, you control the board? Oh. Let's go for big money, big money, big grab money. bag 500. Grab bag for 500 and the, the answer is investing in the charity of your choice, measuring and reporting fundraising costs, internet transaction fees, payment in lieu of taxes or pilot if you like acronyms, percentage-based compensation, and parity in the fundraising profession. Somebody make a noise with your noisemaker, here's a giveaway. Okay, and, and your question was, I, I'm reading this on your face, your question was, what are the white papers that are available? Is that right? That's yes! I knew you were searching for those words. I knew you were searching for those words. There are a lot of, in the ethics section of AFPNet.org, there are some papers that are available, some guidelines and position papers that are, that are available in that section of the website for you on specific issues that have been asked a lot. These are what they are. Uh, so payment in lieu of taxes is one of them, uh, percentage-based compensation, parity in the fundraising profession. If you, you can always check and see if, that's, if there's something there uh, that, that explains what you're concerned about or worried about or asking about. So you control the board just for making noise. How about that? We'll go back. Yes. EAI for 100, Ethics Assessment Inventory, the answer is 14. 14, okay. I'm gonna guess, how many people serve on the Ethics Committee? How many serve, that's, that's the number one question to this, to this answer. It's in the wrong column, but it's the number one question. <laughs> you still get a prize. Because the, the actual question is, the Ethics Assessment Inventory, how many questions are on it? There are only 14 questions. That's why you would never think to ask that question because you would expect it would have a whole lot more questions. It's only 14 questions long. So, uh, so it's remember that when you get back and ready are ready to take the ethics assessment inventory. Okay, you control the board. Let's do the code for 400. Code for 400, and the answer is how to structure an acceptable bonus compensation plan. Make a noise, make a noise. Go ahead, go ahead. I see I see the paddle moving. Okay. And and you're 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 wondering what are the things in the frequently asked question document? Is that what you were trying to figure out? Like I was trying to utter it just as difficult for me to do that as it is for you. Yes. Yeah. What what are some of the kinds of answers 
in the frequently asked questions part of the ethics section of the website, okay? There's a document in there with a lot of answers to a lot of questions, and so uh, what, that's one of them. How do you structure, if you can't accept percentage-based compensation, how do you at least structure a compensation package that relates to performance? And that's one of, the, one of those things, so thank you. Great question, great question. <laughs> <laughs> you control the board. Oh, okay. Well, let's see the code for five. The code for 500. The answer is to provide fundraising professionals guidance on social media for their workplace and to establish guidelines for organizational leaders to use. And the question is? Somebody make noise. There we go. Okay, second table over here. I heard first. Somebody. What? Are, the answer was. What? what oh, the, oh the, the answer was. Why? You're, you're saying why? Do, why are there social guidelines that have been developed? Yes. Social media guidelines. Yes. What are the purpose of the social media guidelines that are on? Yeah. Did, how many of you knew there were social media guidelines for you and your organizations to use? If, if you want to be, there's a lot of potential ethics issues on social media. And so AFP has produced social media guidelines for you to use with your organization as you set up your social media context so, and your social media network. So that's available to you. So great, another good question. What, you control the board. Oh, no, if you go back, yeah, hit home, hit home, hit home, okay. Click, click our heels three times. We'll get home. Okay. Grab bag for 200. Grab bag for 200. And the answer is regulation, ethics, and philanthropy. <laughs> Somebody make a noise. Okay. Yes. Um, the, the three areas the, that the three areas that, that were, were covered that by were the think tank. <laughs> yes. Very good. Yeah. Well, that's I right. See how this works, people. I don't know why you're waiting to make noise. <laughs> Hey. Couldn't it be more simple? <laughs> okay, what was the last AFP think tank about? Every so often, AFP convenes some of the leading minds in the field to discuss certain issues. The last one that was convened was in 2011 in Orlando, Florida, I believe. And the topic of it that they discussed for several days and heard presentations on was regulation. Uh, that's no longer a hot topic, is it? Ethics. <laughs> which is today's program, and philanthropy, those three things. So they talked about it, and as a result of that think tank, they produced this is the cover to a piece that if you are a member, and most of you are, and those of you who aren't know who you are, the uh, members can download this for free. Non-members, you can either buy it for an excessive amount of money, well, I think it's like $95, or uh, you can become good friends with a member who will that might be unethical, though, if they were to download it and get it. <laughs> Become a member is cheaper. So this is what it looks like, though. Regulation, and it's a document that's available. You can purchase it as a member or a non-member, uh, or you can download it for free as a member. Okay, back home. And who was that? I've lost track of who. Okay. Um, oh, you're um, right in front of me. Yeah. How about we go for um, grab bag for 300? Grab bag for 300. The answer is to ensure that philanthropy merits the respect and trust of the general public. I saw a hand here, I didn't hear a noise, but your hand didn't make any noise. <laughs> Don't be a Don't be what? Somebody got it right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Why was the Donor Bill of Rights developed? It was to ensure that philanthropy merits the respect and trust of the general public. Whether you are a member or not, you are welcome to share the Donor Bill of Rights with your donors. I brought copies of it. They're on the registration. And there are copies on the registration table. It is. I was doing this presentation in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania last year. And they stopped me and said, did you know the guy who wrote this is in the room? And, and it was written by an AFP member. It is uh, his original, he told me, is now on, on display at the uh, Indiana University School of Philanthropy in their museum. So, but uh, he is an AFP member, so it was divided, developed by AFP. And, but it's available for members and non-members because we want donors to know what they can expect of an ethical fundraiser. 
So feel free to share that. A lot of people send it as, with their thank you letters for their donations. Okay, you control the board. Oh, no, he controls the board. Oh, he controls the board. Brett does. You gave it over to him, but I saw your hand first. Okay. <laughs> he got it. Um, let's see. I, Lloyd, I just want to ask you, did you serve on the ethics committee with AFP? I was chair for two years. There you go, chair of the ethics committee. So how am I doing so far? Well, I had known a lot of things you were saying, so I think that's pretty good. Good, okay, okay, good. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, the ones in white or the ones we Ones in white. Okay, that's the ethics committee 300. Ethics committee for 300, and the answer is 11 people. Yes? How many people serve on the ethics committee? Again, the m number one asked question about this answer. And in reality, in reality, it's the number of people who have been sanctioned by the Ethics Committee for being in violation of the Code of Ethics. Since 1964, 11 people, now sanctioning means you, your membership is revoked. If you have a CFRE, if you have a CFRE credential, it's revoked. Uh, you can no longer belong. It's revoked. It's not like it's suspended. It's revoked. You can no longer be. Uh, when I started doing this two years ago, it was ten. The last in last year, there was an eleventh person who was sanctioned. That person from Mexico. This is an international organization. And the code of ethics reaches internationally to all our members, wherever they are around the world. And so uh, it is. It is not to be taken lightly. Although I hope you're having a light and airy, fun time today. But the code is a serious matter, and it is enforced. And so eleven people have found that out. Okay, back to. Let's do EAI for five hundred. EAI for five hundred. The answer is well, you believe that you're ethical performance is relevant to your success as a fundraiser and you want a concrete picture of your ethical performance as a fundraiser and you want to use the information provided by that picture to continue to improve your ethical performance. Yes, in the back. Why have an assessment? All right. What was that? Why have an assessment? Why? Why should I have the ethics assessment inventory? Yeah, it's because you want to know how do I stack up against everybody else and I want to do better. And so, and, uh, and I want to use that the information that comes from that to make myself better. So yes, absolutely, another correct answer from the, from the back. By the way, this is what it looks like, the ethics assessment inventory. It is the seven questions you can see if you're sitting in the front. You, you can't read them, but you can at least see them. But uh, there's seven questions and then it goes from never to always. I, I never do this, I always do this. And with that simple seven questions for your individual self and seven questions for the organization, they are able to determine uh, scientifically how you function, how ethical you do compared to everyone else. So uh, this has been developed and you'll find out more about that. Okay, back to the... Libby. Libby. Oh, um, you control the board. Grab bag for four. Grab bag for 400. <laughs> This is my favorite. Ethically blind blindsided. Will it play in Peoria and beyond? <laughs> and next generation ethics. Yes. Uh, Mark. Uh, uh, I'm going to guess. You know, audio, we're not using uh, these noisemakers. I'm going to make Mark, somebody at his table, use his noise, make that noisemaker before he can. There we go. Okay. I feel better. Now. I feel so much better. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a guess that it's an uh, audio or a webinar that's available about ethics on the AFP site. Excellent guess. Excellent guess. It's wrong, but it's an excellent guess. Actually, it is media related, though. I should say that. It is actually what were the titles of Ethicus article in an issue about ethics that Advancing Philanthropy magazine. How many of you are familiar with that? <laughs> Good. Most of the members know we got a magazine that we get every so often. Uh, yeah, it, in April, March, April issue of 2012, the issue was devoted to ethics and fundraising. And those were three of the articles that were in there related to it. Uh, ethically blindsided, will claim Peoria beyond, and next generation ethics. And in case you wondered, the AFP, how many of you are aware that you can research back our issues of AFP online? AFP, uh, Advancing Philanthropy Online. You can search. So if all you can remember from any of that title is Peoria, 
You can actually search Peoria and it will give you this. You can search ethics and it'll give you a far longer list than just those three. So you can search back. You can also email those articles to somebody. You can bookmark them. You can, um, you can keep notes on them. A lot of functionality for the online version of Advancing Philanthropy, whether it's an ethics article or another. So uh, you can print them. If you just want the article to, to be able to print and share with uh, others, uh, that's available from Advancing Philanthropy Online as well. So it's a great tool if you haven't used it. Make yourself familiar with that as well. Hey, Larry, we have an answer for you. For oh. Chapter, you ready? Yes. Alex Comfort. Alex Comfort. <laughs> What? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Who was one of the guest contributors to the recent issue of, to this issue? <laughs> was, was one of those articles yours? Absolutely. Which one? On ethics in the chapter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I forget what I called it. <laughs> we interviewed well, you back because you won. The prize is you may come back. Okay, <laughs> since, since we're sunk this low in the program. <laughs> Let me also share that the online version has a, uh, a an intent. It's intended to be a humorous article on some aspect of fundraising. Uh, I say intended to because I often write it. <laughs> I haven't written it every time, but it's often my product, and it's only online. And I say that's because it's not fit to print. So, but you can only get it online. So, and there's a cartoon. So even if you don't like the article, the cartoons are good, and I have nothing to do with those. So, uh, but that's also only in the online version. You don't get it in the print version. So, lots of stuff online. Okay. Mark controls the board. Mark. Oh yeah. Uh, let's you see. We'll the... take uh, ethics committee for 400, please. Ethics committee for 400. Reprimand, censure, suspension, and oh. I didn't want to finish. You have to wait till I finish. But but have the person at your table get ready to make the noise. Okay. Suspension and revocation. What are the what are the four things that can happen to you if you violate an ethic? Another correct question. What are the level? What are the various levels of sanctions that can be imposed? Reprimand, which is, we know you've done it wrong. You know you've done it wrong. Don't do it again. In essence, did I? Is it? That's right. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I have somebody who can make sure I'm correct here. Uh, <laughs> censure, which is you did wrong, and if you do it again, there will be more punishment coming your way. Suspension, which is you did wrong, and it was so bad, for, the ne for this period of time, you cannot be active in AFP. Your membership is revoked for a period of time. And then, as I mentioned before, revocation which are those 11 people who are no longer allowed to be part of AFP. Okay, understand? Those are the four levels of sanction. Most of the, most of the sanctions that are leveled are at one lesser amount in two, lesser amount in three, and the least amount in four, so. Do you have any data on the other levels of activity and the numbers corresponding? The, I do not, and the reason for that is it is all confidential. It is all confidential. It, the only, in fact, I, I was unfortunately, and I say that because I'm not supposed to be aware of members who have been reported to the Ethics Committee. Even in my role, that is not part of my purview to have anything to do with the, the ethics enforcement. And uh, I, I, was un, I was mistakenly made aware of that. And, and once that was corrected, I will have no idea unless they are Unless their membership is revoked, I will have no idea what the outcome was of the investigation. And that is because you don't want members who are wrong, who, who are misunderstood, to suffer from the process. Okay, from, from... And that's one reason that you meet, the Ethics Committee, I assume it's the same, would meet not in a conference, in a conference setting, because you don't want people parading yeah. at... Uh, and for those of you in the back, that's why the Ethics Committee does not meet at the conference, because it's, it, is, it is to be held in, you know, it's not to be known, oh, they're meeting and they're dealing with this, and look who went in the room. You know, that, it's not that kind of thing. It is completely confidential, complete, as complete as it can be. Ethics Committee and, other, and only those who need to know are involved. So, so Cheryl controls the board. Cheryl, I'm, thank you for keeping track of this one. Uh, Cheryl. 
Well, ethics committee for 500. Ethics committee, you're going on the bottom, not the top. Okay, in writing and signed to the office of the president and CEO of AFP. Make a noise, make a noise. There it is, back, table on the left. You sign the ethics. How do you submit a formal complaint? How do you submit either a complaint or just a question? But the complaint is, is the one that has to be submitted and signed, yes. How do you submit a, how do you, how do you make an allegation? If there's somebody you think is, has violated the code of ethics, what do you do with that? That is to be written and signed and sent to the office of the president and CEO. Okay, there are no actions taken on anonymous allegations. Okay, they need to, the first, usually the first response to an allegation is to contact the submitter, if that's a word, and ask them for more information. Tell us about this, we understand this, please give us more information so that we know what we're dealing with and we can act appropriately based on that. So getting a more complete description of the allegation. But yes, for the allegations, it has to be signed so that they can follow up directly with the person who alleges them, the misconduct. Uh, before they go into the investigation on it. Okay, back to, and you control the board. Can you see which ones are still? <laughs> Let me tell you, we've got ethics assessment inventory, inventory for two and three, the code for three, ethics committee for 100. Those are the four that are left. The code for three, we'll finish this category. 43 pages. I think it was over here I heard a woo. Was that it? Were you the woo? I don't have it. Were you the woo? You were the woo, okay. The woo gets it. I heard the woo before I heard the noise. How long the code is. How long is the code? It, you're, you're close because while the code is on one page, the guidelines that go along with the code that explain the code are 43, and I'm sure that's what you were alluding to for the guidelines. Yeah. 43 pages of guidelines. So you've got the white papers, you've got the, the ethics committee, you've got 43 pages of guidelines, you've got frequently asked questions. It's there for you in most cases. But if you can't find it in any of those sources, the ethics committee is there for you. Okay? Back, and you control. Uh, oh, oh. Go home. we're out of control up front, but you control the screen. <laughs> Ethics committee for 100 to eliminate unethical behavior, not to exact or impose punishment. Yes. What is the purpose of the uh, ethics committee? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what What is the goal of the of the code and the ethics committee? It, and the goal and procedures for enforcing it is not. The ethics committee does not want to have to enforce uh, violations. What the ethics committee wants to do is help fundraisers navigate some of those treacherous waters that can, dis that can distract you from doing the most ethical thing. And, and sometimes it's on how do I do this? And that's why it's great to have such knowledgeable and experienced members on the ethics committee who have seen a lot and, and will work with you to figure out. They will often work with you and your employer if it involves the employer to figure out how do we structure these things so that it's more ethical than what you you are looking to do. So they will help you avoid unethical behavior and, and do things in the most ethical way so that you can be proud of the organization and the way you do things. Okay, back to the screen. We've got EAI for two or three, which do you want? EAI for two. EAI for 200. A snapshot of their ethical performance, a comparison of themselves with peers across AFP, and a way to assess and strengthen ethical dimensions. Oh, way in the back. Ethical dimensions, get ready to make noise. Ethical dimensions <laughs> of their practice. There it is, in the back. Okay, nobody else made noise to try and sneak up on you. What do you get out of taking the ethics assessment inventory? <laughs> what does it, what's it going to give you in your organization? It's going to tell you how you measure up. What a snapshot. It's one time. Here's how you were when you answered this. Okay, but it compares you with everyone else who has taken that. So the more people take it, the more broad range uh, is the data that supports the, the, the results that you get. But then it, it's a way to assess and a way it will point out some in its, in its final data, its final report to you, how you can strengthen your ethical performance.
performance. So it gives you some indication of where, where you may want to do some work and where you are strong. So, okay. And you control the board. <laughs> I suppose you want ethics assessment inventory for 300. <laughs> Am I right? Ethics yes, I thought so, okay. Not more than once every six months. Oh! Well, How often should you do the assessment? How often should you do it? Don't do it more often than every six months because that skews the data. Do it annually at least. But I need to tell you, you if when you do it, keep print out the results and keep track of them yourself. It is complete again, completely confidential. We cannot access the data for you. We cannot access your res your responses. We cannot access your results. If you don't print it out or save it to your computer, it's lost in the in with everything else. We don't have that capability. So take it, it's for your use, not for ours. Okay, it is for your use. So use it and, and make good use of it and keep track of that and check yourselves every six months or a year to see when you turn the clocks is a good time. Do, do your ethics assessment inventory and use that as a reminder or annually if you want. Okay, we have down at the bottom right is we have one more round to go and that is for everybody and that is Final Jeopardy, right? Yeah, that means I get to eat my dessert. Okay. And the final Jeopardy answer is, and, and you either formulate the question in your mind, and after we do this, we will go around the room one by one. No. The last module of both the Fundamentals of Fundraising and the CFR Review course. And the question is, and we'll see how many, yeah, we'll do that. We'll give you some time to think. What do you think the question is? <laughs> Can you do that on those flutes that we went about? <laughs> Please keep the flute, by the way, keep the flutes and the paddles and the whiz bangs or whatever they are, because uh, I don't want to sterilize them after we do this. So feel free to keep them. Uh, yeah, okay, is the music done? Yes. Okay. Uh, you yeah, know, we could go on interminably. People just kept doing it. <laughs> the final Jeopardy question is, where do you find information in course format about ethics? Both the Fundamentals of Fundraising course and the CFR Review course, which are courses that AFP uh, is, and for those of you who don't know, Fundamentals of Fundraising is available online for you to take. Uh, but both of them, the final module in both, because one of the last things we want our students to remember is the importance of ethics in everything that they do functionally. So the last module of both of those courses is on ethics, and it's important for you to know. I want to thank you so much for your, for your participation <laughs> and your commitment to ethical fundraising. one which is a free lunch um, for a chapter meeting which I will give if anybody wants to trade their prizes <coughs> go ahead and trade them at the prize table over there and you can trade your prizes in we also need folks and we would love to have you join us for philanthropy <coughs> Institute to be a volunteer so enjoy lunch we'll see you on the third Wednesday of next month for a how to kill your board <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good.